Now that you've learned about the um, cell history and the scientists, we will talk about the specific type of um, cells that exist. Um, so the standard, uh, explain the role of cell organelles for both prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. Um, we will learn about the cell membrane and maintaining homeostasis and cell reproduction, but not today. Today we're going to focus on um, prokaryotic and eukaryotic cell types. Two basic types of cells, we have prokaryotic and eukaryotic, prokaryote, eukaryote. We, in class, we did talk about the difference between pro and you. Hopefully, you'll be able to um, be, remind me of that tomorrow. Characteristics of prokaryotes is pro means no, and that means no nucleus, no membrane-bound organelles. So that means not membrane. There, they do have organelles, but the organelles within a prokaryotic cell do not have a membrane. Um, prokaryotes would be the smaller type of cell that we talked about in class so that would be like the RK bacteria and even the U bacteria would be considered prokaryotic. If we look at the picture here um, looking at the measurements okay so um, which one would be the bigger cell? I'm going to ask, ask you to answer that for me tomorrow which one is bigger prokaryotic or eukaryotic based on this measurement. Um, both of them have a plasma membrane which is movable, it's also known as the cell membrane. Um, both have the cytoplasm. Both have DNA. The DNA of a prokaryotic cell is uh, small, like a little Cheerio. Okay, now it gets to the confusing part. Prokaryotic cells do not have a nucleus. They have a nucleoid region right here, which is the area that's dense with um, DNA. Now a eukaryotic cell does have a nucleus and there's a, the DNA is definitely in there and that is probably what you know most about is the eukaryotic nucleus. Um, but prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells both have my favorite organelle which is the ribosome. And ribosome are free floating organelles, they are not membrane bound and they can also be in the eukaryotic cell attached to um, the rough endoplasmic reticulum. We'll come back and talk about all the different organelles, but I do want you to know that prokaryotic cells differ from eukaryotic cells in a lot of different ways. Now, if you see this here, that is a flagella, and we talked about that when we talked about the anatomy of the sperm, and then this one also has cilia. Um, these are just ways of locomotion. It's the way that the prokaryotic cell can get around. Most eukaryotic cells are going to join together to make a larger organism so each individual cell of a eukaryotic um, type does not have locomotive abilities. Oh locomotion means like moving. Okay some more characteristics of prokaryotic cells is that um, they are small and simple. They are bacteria and RK bacteria um, and bacteria are unicellular single cell organisms. So all bacteria, entire body is made up of one cell. So this is a picture of a bacterial colony where this would only be one bacteria and then this would actually be, they join together and make a little colony, but they are still only one organism. Now, the other type is the eukaryotic, you do. You do have a nucleus. They have a true nucleus, meaning that dense in the middle of the cell. If you look in the back picture right here, that right there would be like the nucleus. That would be another one. And this is a plant cell. Okay. Um, eukaryotics do have membrane bound organelles. Membrane bound organelles are the organs inside the cell that have a membrane around them. Some more characteristics of eukaryotic cells are that they are both unicellular and multicellular, meaning they can be made up of only one cell of this whole body or it can join together to make up um, more complex organ organisms. Eukaryotic cells are complex in structure, meaning there's more pieces involved inside of a eukaryotic cell. Plants, animals, fungi, and um, microorganisms can be considered eukaryotic. OK, 
Okay, the two examples that we are going to cover are the plant cell and the animal cell. Both are which we include as eukaryotic. Don't get plant cell and animal confused. Um, it's common to think that a plant cell would be prokaryotic and an animal cell would be eukaryotic, when actually they have more in common with each other than a prokaryotic cell. Plant cells are um, have a lot of organelles. They're different from the animal cell because they have a chloroplast and a cell wall. The cell wall is what makes the structure of the plant um, strong and it makes the cell square and more rigid. It also is going to be rectangular shaped and kind of oblong. So these cells behind the PowerPoint here are plant cells. You can see them at different stages of mitosis but um, you can see the shape here and then you can see the dense area which would be the nucleus. When you look at the cells under the microscope for your plant cell you should see something like this. All right, for the plant cell, here's a picture of it. Um, you have the cell wall, but you also have a plasma membrane or cell membrane. The plant cell has a very large vacuole right here, and it's used for holding water. Plants thrive on water, so they need a space to hold all, the, all of that water. When a plant um, needs water, you would know it and I would know it because it wilts. It uh, bends over. So the vacuole is empty and that makes the cells within the plant actually collapse and then that's why you see a plant that's gonna bend down and weep almost and then when you give it water it'll take it up and eventually it'll reach the back vacuole of the cell and then that plant will actually stand straight up and be happy another thing that they have that um, animal cells do not is the chloroplast and we are going to be very involved in the chloroplast when we learn about photosynthesis. Um, and that's where it all goes down is right here in the chloroplast. As you can see, it also, the plant cell also has a mitochondria. All, um, all cells are going to, should have a mitochondria because it helps power. Um, but only plant cells will have the chloroplast. And you can see there's a lot of them in there. And then this is what you could see when you look in the microscope very closely. The animal cell is going to have a lot of organelles also. Um, and it's different from the plant cell because it has centrioles. Centrioles help with cell division. It helps the animal cell divide. Um, it's, and then the animal cell is also circular and it's going to be round in shape. So this is the animal cell. As you can see, it has a cell membrane that's right here. It's not as rigid, so it doesn't have that cell wall. Another word for a cell membrane is the plasma membrane. Okay, and let me see if I can find that vacuole. So this picture doesn't really have a vacuole um, within it, but animal cells do have very, very small vacuoles, little pockets that hold water. Um, and see, yes, there's mitochondrion, but there is a lack of um, of chloroplasts because chloroplasts are not in animal cells. Okay, when you look in the microscope, when you do your cheek cell, you should have seen or will see something that looks just like this. So you just see really the nucleus and you should be able to identify the cell um, membrane. Okay, we can't see a lot of the other, other organelles because we don't have strong enough microscopes. Alright, <clears throat> now let's go into a couple of organelles. The, endo the endoplasmic reticulum um, is the site that produces proteins. Um, the endoplasmic reticulum packages um, and can send proteins to different places because it has something called the ribosome, which is my favorite organelle. The ribosome exists on the endoplasmic reticulum, but it also exists floating throughout the cell. 
the ribosomes are attached to the rough ER and that's what makes the protein and then after that the protein are packaged through the endoplasmic reticulum. Now there is also a smooth ER and it does not contain ribosomes. That's why it's smooth. And what it does is it helps synthesize and produce lipids. Lipids are fats, waxes, um, and they are very essential to the cell membrane. So the lipids are being produced and shipped through the ER to the cell membrane. The Golgi apparatus, I think of it as like a, like it looks like a stack of pancakes or something. But what it does is it packages and distributes substances. And it actually can package um, anything and prepare it to be shipped out of the cell. So that's why you would find a vesicle right here. And it's right next to the Golgi apparatus. So the Golgi can take in any type of organelle that maybe shouldn't be there. And then it will go into the vesicle. The vesicle moves out and can um, be attached to the cell membrane and actually pushes all of that waste out of the cell um, through a process called exocytosis. Uh, vacuoles, we talked a little bit about that. They're larger in plants and they're used to store water. I may ask you tomorrow, um, what, how do you know when a plant is going to need water? You're going to need to know that it's because the vacuole will be shrunken, then the plant will be wilted, and really cellularly, it's because the cells run out of water to fill up the vacuole to maintain that integrity or the shape of the cell. The mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. Um, we can nickname it the mitochondria. Um, it makes ATP, which is an awesome energy um, substance that gives all animals tons of energy. Without the mitochondria, we would not be able to function. So it looks like this, like, and it has double membranes. So it has this membrane on the outside, and it has an inner membrane space that helps with the production of these ATPs. And I cannot wait to explain to you exactly how this energy happens. The chloroplast, we touched up on it, only in plant cells, and it's how photosynthesis takes place. So photosynthesis is, um, you know, when the light is trapped inside of a plant, and it actually was going to create food um, in the form of glucose or sugar. So chloroplasts are awesome as well. So chloroplasts and mitochondria, ribosomes, are hands down the most interesting organelles to me. Centrioles, um, they're, they help for cell division in animal cells only. Um, the centrioles, they actually look like um, uh, Twizzlers to me. Um, basically what they do is they go to opposite ends of the cell and pull apart um, the DNA within the cell so that it can create division for the cell and some of the DNA can go one way and the other can go another way. That's just an overview. It, it can be a little, it's way more difficult than that, but an overview of a centriole is to help the cell divide. The cilia and the flagella, those are used for locomotion and movement. Um, we went over that a little bit earlier. And the cell wall um, is protecting, it gives shape and support to the plants. Um, it's very rigid and it keeps a specific uh, amount of things within the cell and lets a specific amount out. It's a protection layer.